Assalamualaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy, and today we're going to discuss the anatomy of the pharynx with a model. So let's get started. So here we can see uh, a little bit of the nasal cavity and the pharynx larynx. Let me just give you an overview of all of this. So basically, uh, orientation is that this area is the base of skull. You can see the roof of the nasal cavity is being formed by ethmoid bone. Uh, behind that is this phenoid bone, and most posteriorly is the occipital bone. The pharynx basically uh, begins or superiorly bounded by the base of the skull consisting of the body of sphenoid and the uh, occipital bone more specifically the basilar part of the occipital bone right it is divided into three parts this area over here which extends from the posterior nasal aperture till the uh, lower margin of the soft palate this area is known as the nasopharynx between the soft palate and the upper border of the epiglottis this is the epiglottis right here it between this lies the oropharynx and beneath the epiglottis all the way you have the laryngopharynx after at C6 level begins your esophagus to which the basically pharynx is going to continue as it all right now let's talk about the nasopharynx its anterior boundary is the posterior nasal aperture its uh, uh, roof or its posterior boundary is by this tonsil over here called the nasopharyngeal tonsil this is that tonsil you can see its uh, lateral wall is formed by this tube right here here is the auditory tube and you can see in relation to the auditory tube this elevated area is known as a tubal tonsil all right so the auditory tube is a very important connection of the nasopharynx to the middle ear so that there can be pressure uh, equalization of pressure between the ear and the middle ear cavity all right then we have this is the lateral wall now we can move on to our oropharynx and the oropharynx are boundaries are anteriorly is the oral cavity posteriorly is the second and third cervical vertebra you can see and uh, the lateral wall of the oropharynx is formed by this very important structure in the tonsillar fossa called the palatine tonsil this is the palatine tonsil anteriorly it is bound by the palatoglossus muscle posteriorly by the palatopharyngeus muscle below uh, to the upper border of the epiglottis we are going to talk about the beginning of the laryngopharynx that is the final part of the pharynx the laryngopharynx is basically going to uh, have uh, anterior boundary of the inlet of the larynx as you can see here its uh, inferior boundary is obviously is going to continue as esophagus uh, its superior boundary is the you can see oropharynx posteriorly bounded by the fourth and fifth cervical vertebras all right so, so here i also want to show you the larynx a little bit the, this is the larynx and in the larynx firstly you can see the epiglottic cartilage the epiglottic cartilage is being connected to the hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone hyo hyo epiglottic ligament that is lying right here you can see at the epiglottis uh, in relation to the uh, posterior post part of the tongue is forming this fold called the glossoepiglottic fold and this area over here you can see is known as the vallecula this right here over here posterior most part of the tongue you can see this is this uh, tonsil called the lingual tonsil all right these tonsils are very important the valdeus lymphatic ring is uh, formed around this naso oropharyngeal isthmus right here this ring is formed by these tonsils including nasopharyngeal the tubal the palatine tonsil and the lingual tonsil in the larynx you can see you have the vestibular fold above and vocal fold below between them is the sinus of the larynx it's a space between the two uh, vocal cords this right here anteriorly is the thyroid cartilage and posteriorly is the cricoid cartilage why because uh, posteriorly the thyroid cartilage has free borders with superior and inferior horns and the cricoid cartilage which you can see here this is the body of it goes posteriorly to form these lamina this is the lamina of the cricoid cartilage there is passage of uh, air to the nasopharynx to the oropharynx and up to the laryngopharynx after which uh, the air passes through the larynx but when there's food passage it comes here in the laryngopharynx and then it immediately enters the esophagus the epiglottis closes over here so that the food particle cannot enter the entry of the uh, lungs therefore the food directly goes into your esophagus pharynx is formed by this this fascia known as the pharyngo basilar fascia which is the innermost uh, fascia of the pharynx and this pharyngo basilar fascia uh, for a while between the base of the skull and the first muscle you can see the pharyngo basilar fascia between the base of skull and the superior constrictor over there there is no muscle covering it and then come your muscles first there is an inner longitudinal layer then there is an outer circular layer first comes superior constrictor uh, which originates from the medial uh, pterygoid plate which lies about here in the lateral wall medial pterygoid plate and then it inserts in the uh, raft of the pharynx posteriorly then comes your uh, next muscle middle constrictor coming from the hyoid bone mostly and it gets inserted in the raft 
after which comes your inferior constrictor from the thyroid and cricoid cartilage. Over here at this level is this area just below the vocal folds and upper border of the cricoid lamina. This area right here is known as the Killian's dehiscence where your thyropharynges part of the inferior constrictor is a single sheet of muscles through which your pharyngeal diverticulum can uh, occur. So that's all you needed to know, a brief overview of the pharyngeal anatomy. Really hope you understood well. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.